Well, the second game of the World Cup qualifier for the US is in the books and in a game where many people dubbed this as a must-win game against Canada at home, the US could not get the job done. As in the end, for the second World Cup qualifier in a row, they have to settle a draw and this time it was a 1-1 draw against Canada. And I just want to quickly remind people that yes, I know this is not, not an ideal start for the US and obviously I definitely have some concerns about this team especially going forward where this is the second consecutive game where I thought the, the attack was was not good enough for this team and especially the, the, the big mystery of who exactly has to step up in this number 9 position for the US to be that, that goal scorer to, to score the goals for this for this team in the future but that being said you know this is only the second game of the World Cup qualifier and especially with the way that CONCACAF decided to expand the World Cup qualifier to 14 games there is still a long way before we actually get to a point where if the US does continue to struggle and let's say maybe by the fifth or sixth game they continue to be in a very bad bad st stage like what happened in the last World Cup qualifier then yeah that would be a time that that there should be a lot of panic but Again, you know, this is just another game where they just did not do enough going forward on the attack. And, you know, when you look at the starting 11 in this game, it was kind of same, similar to the last one. Although, well, actually, there were definitely some changes in terms of the last game. It was actually it wasn't similar to the last starting 11. I mean, besides Matt Matt Turner and Sergino Dest that, that start in this game, I don't think anybody else... Well, actually, you got Tyler Adam. He did start in that game against Al... El Salvador but I don't think there's any other player that actually started in that game against El Salvador that also started in this game against against Canada you got Anthony Robinson John Brooks uh, Christian Pulisic uh, Brendan Aronson Miles Robinson Sebastian Legette uh, Jordan Pickfuck and also Kellen Acosta in the starting 11 in this game uh, no Gio Reyna in this game due to a right hamstring string, string that he suffered and that's definitely a bit of a loss for the US and I thought this was kind of maybe one of those games where where the US kind of really need need Gio Reyna. I mean the good news is they did get Christian Pulisic back in the the starting 11 but you also feel like like may, maybe the US if they want to be a little bit more dynamic on the attack and just not have to to rest on the shoulder of Pulisic they also want Gio Reyna to be in this game but unfortunately he was out because of a right hamstring injury and for Another player that is out for this game is Western McKenney, but not because of injury issue, but he actually violated the team COVID policy. And this is not the first time we've seen Western McKenney has violated the team COVID policy. Uh, if you remember what, during his time with Juventus, he also got, got in trouble in terms of violating Juventus COVID policy. And that's just something that I feel like Western McKenney's got to learn. Like you simply cannot just, just, kind of ignore the these policy and that you know that's something that that you know i know he's still relatively young and he's trying to mature but you know at the end of the day you've got to to mature better and he he even knows that he even apologized to everybody about about the the covid policy that he he violated and you know hopefully this will be kind of a lesson for for him to learn to never do that again and hopefully we can have him back for the game against honduras on wednesday now, in the first half, uh, I thought early on, lots of possession for the U.S., which is unsurprising because I thought the U.S. was going to get a lot of possession, and I knew what Canada was going to do in this game, which is they're just going to sit back and try to hit on the counter because they have a lot of speedy players going forward on the attack. And in fact, early on, that, that tactics actually kind of work, work out for Canada as Kyle Lahren actually go, goes through on goal, but unfortunately puts a weak shot that goes straight to Turner. Before Turner had to deny Laren after just a bad defensive play by Miles Robinson. I mean, just completely mis misread it. Allowed Kyle Laren to go through on goal. Unfortunately for 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 Miles Robinson, his goalkeeper Turner was able to bail him out in that play. Um, in the 17th minute, uh, this is kind of something that's unrelated to this game, but I kind of want to put that on the board because they mentioned there was a power outage in El Salvador, and the 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 game between El Salvador and and Honduras was cur currently delayed be because of that, and I just thought that's just peak cocky calf moment. Like you, 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 you know, I I feel like at least in some way it was good the fact that it happened during during that game because imagine if it happened between the U.S. and El Salvador back 
on Thursday and how that would just be a definitely a bit of a, a talking point especially if El Salvador actually or actually no if the U.S. actually took the lead and they kind of sh just shut out uh, out the the power outage to prevent the U.S. to kind of run away with the game yeah that that would just be kind of a peak conky calf moment and something tells me that power outage wasn't actually actually so by by accident and maybe somebody kind of kind of sabotaged it in order to kind of stop the moment to a play although you know i'm not sure if that's going to be the case because because or i'm not sure if that was the case because you know i didn't want i did not watch the game between el salvador and honduras which was actually playing simultaneously during this game but in the 21st minute the first shot on goal finally happened for the u.s as anthony robinson puts it straight to bro john and again this is the problem for the U u.s that i talk about how you know despite the fact that they had a lot of possession and they kind of control the first 20 minutes of the game it only took them until the 21st minute to finally get their first shot on goal although in the 26th minute it almost was one nothing in favor of the u.s but it wasn't because of one of their players score a goal and instead it was actually canada that almost had a disastrous moment as kennedy almost scored an on goal but bro Brogian was able to make a save to prevent that to, to go in and then there was a bit of a scuffle between both teams and just kind of a reminder that, you know, in a CONCACAF World Cup qualifier and especially, you know, I know the U.S. and Canada, they haven't really been historically known as a rival. I mean, if this was hockey, then that's a whole different story. But in soccer, it's not a as intense as what you see in, in hockey. But I think with the way that both of these teams are starting to get much better, we're going to definitely start to see that there seems to be more more of a ri rivalry and that this could maybe be one day equally as big of a rivalry as U.S. and, and Mexi Mexico as we see all, all the time. But yeah, you know, there was definitely some scuffle between both of these teams. There was definitely some bad blood that was shared during that play. But in the 30th minute, uh, Pulisic did have a shot that took a wicked deflection and I think it was Kennedy again that kind of try, trying to be a little bit, bit too too cautious there and basically trying to block the shot away even though he didn't really need to do so and because of that he actually almost deflected that or almost redirected right toward goal and fortunately for him him that one actually goes wide and the game remains at nil nil and at that point i thought the u.s was definitely pressing for the opener and the possession was 75 to 25 in favor of the u.s throughout through 36 minutes into the game and the U.S. actually came to, came really close in the 40th minute to get the opener as the post denied Pete Falk and the U.S. the opener up to that point before Legit hit, hits it wide on the volley right on the stroke of halftime. And we do head to halftime, no, no, between the U.S. and Canada. Now, in the second half, the U.S. finally bro broke through. And it's Brandon Aronson that finally broke through for the U.S. as he scored from Pulisic to give the U.S. a 1-0 lead. And up to that point, I thought, well, looks like the U.S. have maybe take care of their, their business. Because, you know, for a long time, this it, we were just waiting for this team to score that elusive goal. And finally, it happened in the 50, the 5th minute. And you would think that the U.S. should go on to win this game, right? Well, in the 59th minute, they did have a chance to make it 2-0 as Pete Folk header was clear off of Donnell Henry, and that clearance by Donnell Henry turns out, out to be a very big clearance because two minutes later, Canada would equalize. It's Kyle Lahren that scores from Dave, Davies to, to make it 1-1 in this game, and, you know, coming into this game, we knew how dangerous Alfonso Davies is in that flank area, and that, you know, I was kind of concerned at time when Davies was running at our back line and that it just feels like as the game kind of continued to worn on and especially our back line started to get tired tired that's when Davies is going to pound on it and at that that play that was exactly what happened where the back line just kind of switched off they allowed Davies to go go through on go and when Davies goes through on go and gets gets to the byline to try to have a chance to cut that one back in yeah that is definitely something that the U.S. do not want to do and and in that sequence they did did so and also Kyle Lahren you know he was just all alone in the box and there was also definitely some question of how in the world do you leave the mo one of the most da dangerous attacker and really Canada's um go goal score wide open in in the the 18 yard box like that but nevertheless you know Canada was back to level 
pegging and the 40,000 inside Nissan Stadium, which, you know, after when the U.S. took the lead, they definitely kind of come to life a little bit, but they basically went dead silent when that when that goal, of course, went in. And I thought, you know, throughout this game, you know, the atmosphere, it just it just wasn't there. Like, I, I mean, you know, I know, know they try their, their best to cut kind kind of create a good atmosphere and and kind of will this u.s team to potentially get get a goal which you know they kind of did so in the first half but it just feels like as soon as that they that goal went in for canada you know not only the fact that this crowd at first kind of went went silent because they were stunned the fact that the that the canadians have equalized but just they weren't able to kind of produce that same energy and kind of just will this team team through and this kind of makes me wonder maybe u.s soccer federation might not think about nashville as as a destination for for any any for future world cup qualifier game i mean i'm not saying nashville doesn't have ha is not really a, a a city that ha has good soccer culture i mean you know nashville does have an mls team in nashville sc and at times when i watch nashville sc games th there's there's some good atmosphere that that happened during this doing those games too but really in this game they kind of were a li little bit underwhelming and especially underwhelming when when i thought that that you know late in the game when this this u.s team really need need help from the fans the fans just never bought it i mean they just i mean they were kind of just standing there i think also at one point i think uh Stu holding <coughs> oh Excuse me on that. Sue Holding kind of man mentioned the fact that the crowd was kind of standing, but they were kind of just stuck, just kind of silent by standing up. And it's like, well, if you're going to stand up, why not just make some noise instead of just kind of stand up there and just be silent and hope that something will will help you to to kind of eject, eject you to maybe cel celebrate or or give some energy to the team. Why not do it when when you really need need to to bring the energy to help spark the team a little bit to maybe get that that second goal but uh nevertheless uh let's get back into talking about this game because i'm kind of getting a little bit off track talking about the crowd uh canada you know i thought thought after getting that equalizer they really started to bring on the cavalry and that they they were kind of sensing that you know yes you know a draw out of this game will definitely feel like a win but what happened if we actually go for 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 a win and get all three points and that exactly what they thought that they were going to do when they decided to bring David and Buchanan into this game and as soon as I saw Jonathan David and Tejan Buchanan bought in for Canada I knew the U.S. was probably going to be be screwed because you know the back line was already started to be very tired uh but th that being said in the 65th minute uh Acosta did puts it high from long range before on the other end Mark Anthony K tried to curb one in but miss high and then of course things started to kick off again between both team as there was a bit of a scuffle and then i also kind of wrote is greg Her Ber berhalter go going to go full adrian heave and refuse to use some some subs i mean you know i just don't understand why did he wait it so late to make subs in this game like you can clearly see that this team was all was already they started to be gas and the fact that this team decided to not use this or Burholter decided to not use his sub until so late into the game. I mean that he basically kind of got full full Adrian Heave in, in this this game with the way that you know Adrian Heave. I mentioned many times before how he never tends to like to use use sub in 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 the game that that Minnesota of course play, and it just feels like it's kind of the same same story in this this case for Greg Burholter. Uh, but in the 77th minute, uh, Buchanan actually went through on goal, but he unfortunately missed wide, and I think that that was a sigh of relief because this go this run that Buchanan basically made was very similar to the one that he he made in the game against Mexico in the Gold Cup semifinal. And that game, he was able to put the ball into the back net, but this time, uh, he actually puts that one just a little bit wide. And I also kind of wrote the U.S. back line is just completely gas. And I, I was, at that point, kind of just begging for Greg Berhalter to make some substitution. Because, you know, if this this team continued to be, be like this, I guarantee you that, that Canada was going to get that second goal. And they had a chance to, to maybe potentially get that second goal when they, they were ha having a huge shout for a penalty after Buchanan was brought down from from Tyler Adams and I thought that was a a, a a relatively good call from the referee because you know I know in real time it looked like Adams clearly brought down Buchanan but when you look 
get it in in the replay and especially slow motion it seems like it was kind of just a shoulder to shoulder challenge and it seems like there was really nothing wrong with it and if anything i think if it was a foul it would have probably been happening outside the box because it definitely looked like buchanan was trying to kind of kind of throw himself into the to the box so he can draw a penalty but obviously the referee wasn't bu buying that but in the 82nd minute finally greg burholder did decide to go to his bench and make some substitution i mean he did make a couple of attacking substitution uh bring christian rodan uh josh Sargent and Conrad uh, De La Forte into to this game, but I just thought that that was just way too late to make the substitution, considering there's only like eight minutes left in the game. Uh, Pulisic then hits it high on the free kick from 29 yards out in the 86th minute, before Robinson had a chance to play hero again with with the header, header, but unfortunately this one goes high, and in the end, the U.S. unable to get that, that three points that they... They were supposed to, to get in this game against Canada as the shots of this one. 11 shots compared to 6 that Canada has, but only 2 shots on goal that the U.S. had in the entire game compared to 2 that Canada also had. 6 shots off target compared to 3 that Canada has. 3 shots out blocked compared to 1 that Canada has. And possession-wise, 72% possession compared to 28% possession that Canada has in this game. And, you know, like I said, you know, this is just not good enough for... For the U.S. and I, I'm still thinking that you know maybe when you look at these first two games, the team is still trying to kind of jump together and eventually, hopefully, this team can 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 sort sort thing, things out and and start to get get victory against against team both home and away. But the problem is, you know, when you look at these first two games, it just doesn't seem like they kind of made made any progress. And in some way, this feels like it was almost the same game as the one that. That they play against El Salvador where they just look toothless going for on the attack. And you know the other thing I also want, want to say. And the other thing I kind of absorbed absorb before. Is that you know the problem with the US go, going for on the attack. And most of the time look toothless. Isn't a new problem that they, they, they had coming into this this World Cup qualifier. Or a new problem that they had from the last. From the last game in the world cup qualifier this actually has been a problem for the u.s for a while now and if you actually look at some of those those game in the gold cup and also look at some of the game in the concap nations league yeah you know those games especially in in those big kind of in environment and those kind of playoff kind kind of environment type of games the u.s really struggled to 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 score goals and able to find a way to go to, to get that crucial goal to win the game and you know the only difference is at least in the gold cup and also in the nations league they were able to score some big goals to eventually win both of those competition and we didn't really quite see that in the first two world cup qualifier game but that being said you kind of also don't want to rely on that as your way to potentially get all three points you want to make sure sure you you're able to score goals and able to kind of clo close out games because you know there's you can only do th do that many times where you're able to score late goals to get get yourself just over the line before it just does not work it anymore and then and that you start to get these kind of resort that the US had in the first two games. So, yeah, you know, you know, we'll see how how the US is going to be doing in the third game and now you think the game against Honduras where, you know, usually whenever there's an away CONCACAF World Cup qualifier game I usually don't won't say that it's a must-win situation because we know this team really struggle uh, in in a away game, especially against team in the Central American region. But in some way, because of the, the the drop points that the U.S. has in this game against Canada, and really over the years, the reason why the U.S. are able to make the World Cup time and time again is because they're able to get all three points at their at at home and take care of business at home. But you know, with this early signs of the fact that they weren't able to do so and once again getting off to a slow start in the world cup qualifier you just feel like these next couple of games is going to be really big and kind of almost like a measuring stick for for greg berhalter too because you know i know no i said before that you know it might be a little bit of an overreaction to to demand berhalter to be 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 out be fired from from the, the u.s men's national team job but if this does not improve and if this team continue to struggle like the way they have done in the first two games then those kind kind of drums is going to bang louder and those 
kind of kind of possibility could potentially happen if this team continue to struggle in the World Cup qualifier. Because, like I said, World Cup qualifier for the U.S. This is probably the big, biggest thing that they 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 got got in these last couple of years, and this is really kind of the measuring stick to tell whether or not if this team have moved forward and have moved move past that nightmare that they had in 2017 in Cuba. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.